Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enkip. Blender 3.1 is here and this is the most recent release from the folks at Blender Foundation. Blender 3.1 comes with a huge set of features and particularly 3.1 ships with a lot of performance and improvement. The whole idea for 3.1 is to help artists create faster and this has been improved in several categories and it makes sense to see that the folks at Blender Foundation are continually polishing this tool to make it the tool of choice for 3D artists. Cycles now has support for Metal GPU backend. Now this was contributed by the folks at Apple when they joined the Blender development fund. Now we've seen a couple of iterations of beta testing for this, but it makes sense to see that right now, this is now supported for the GPU backend. So if you do own a Mac that has an M1 GPU or CPU support, right now you can take advantage of Cycles and start rendering with it. One cool thing to see that the folks at Blender Foundation are doing is the improvement of what Cycles can now offer. Regardless of the fact that we now have Metal support for Cycles, the folks at Blender Foundation are continuing polishing what Cycles can bring to the table with a huge set of improvement and performance for 3.1. Point clouds has been something that we've seen in previous iterations of Blender, but this new release now ships with a couple of things. The new point cloud object can be rendered directly with cycles to create sand, water splashes, particles, and even motion graphics. Now we've seen a couple of iterations of these, but it's quite impressive to see that the new point cloud is much more memory efficient, renders faster, and also comes with a point cloud information node. Point clouds can also be generated with the geometry nodes, or they can be imported from any other DCC app. Now, once you bring this directly into Blender, it's quite easy for you to render these things and get the most out of it by simply using cycles. There's a lot of things that is now coming to Cycles that just simply make sense. The ray tracing precision is one of the cool things coming over to Cycles. We're also seeing that there's an optimal temporal, the noising. And for those who like to work with vectors, there's a range map on vectors that is currently available for Cycles right now. And of course, this list simply goes on and on. The new adjacent for baking is also something that is now available in Cycles. The fish eye lens poly normal model is also something that is pretty cool. But for those who would like to read more about Cycles, you want to see some of the more features that is now available with Cycles, you can also go over to the link in the description that will bring you right over here where you can see all of these things. One of the biggest projects that we did see from last year that shipped over to this year is the Geometry Node. The Geometry Node is an ever-growing procedural system that the entire Blender community seems to be very excited about. Every single day there is one beautiful project about the Geometry Node that ships out from one creator's desktop over to the internet and this has actually inspired more and more people to think procedurally. The Geometry Node in 3.1 also ships with lots and lots of features to create more accessibility and also give Blender users some power nodes to create astonishing and and breathtaking design. The geometry nodes for 3.1 now ships with 19 new nodes which comprises of mesh modeling tools, some advanced field controls and so much more. Alongside with all of the nodes that is currently available with 3.1, it's also worth knowing that there's an incredible performance improvement that now comes with the geometry nodes. And of course, there's also a couple of UI improvements that has been made. Like we mentioned in previous videos, some of these things include the drag and drop for searching, which does not only exist for the geometry node, but is being implemented throughout the entire node network that exists with Blender. The new feature that is also available with the geometry node is the instance attribute. Instances can now have their own dynamic attributes and this fully elevates them from their own domain and enables a very powerful workflow. So meshes can inherit data from instances and at the same time inherit data from points that inherits data from instances. That is just an interesting way of dealing with instances but the list just simply goes on and on. The node group asset is also something that is available as it turns out that you can now mark up groups and set them as assets. These assets can be stored in the asset browser which you can now drag and drop into a new project and proceed with working with it. The evaluation time for node has now been reduced and at the same time the spreadsheet now contains the volume grid information. But regardless of this there are some building block set of nodes which includes the extrude mesh, the scale element, the stretch map using fields at index and this list just simply goes on and on with amazing nodes that would just change the way creators work. A huge shout out to the folks at Blender Foundation for dedicatedly creating these nodes as this will allow creators explore, unleash and create amazing stuff by simply playing with nodes. Now for modeling, there's just a few features that are here. The first one deals with the vertex creasing. Now it is now possible to mark up individual surfaces as arbitrary shafts to create interesting shapes more efficiently. There's also support for Pixar Open Sub Div for modeling and rendering, Alembic and USD support for both importing and exporting is now here. Grease Pencil now has a new feature that deals with the Fill tool. At this point, users can either contrast or dilate their fills depending on what they want. So the Fill tool now allows negative values as it creates contrast where the outline is needed. 
And finally, there's some improvements to the subdivision. Now, huge thanks to the GPU acceleration support that is now available with the subdivision modifier. Playback time within your 3D viewport is even way faster. And with the chat here, you can tell what your performance would look like if you do have a subdivision turned on and an animation is playing. And this is for 3.0. And this is basically what it looks like when you're working with 3.1 and in this case a higher value is better so for those who like to preview the animation in the best quality possible by actually throwing a subdivision on top of the model then this is going to put a smile on your face but this is not all there is even way more stuff that has to do with performance that includes a faster obj and fbx import 3.1 image editor now has support for 52k images so at this point you can now throw in a 52k image directly into blender and watch it display in all of its full hd glory and that's about it blender 3.1 is now here and for anyone who would like to read up on some of these impressive updates that are now available link to this is going to be in the description so do well to check it out meanwhile i do know lots of you guys would be like we didn't get to see anything that deals with layer texturing or the texturing itself and probably sculpting and this is simple the folks at Blender Foundation are currently working on a project right now that we mentioned in the previous video. So just in case you like to follow up with the layer texture design, would you definitely change the way you get the texture in Blender? I'm going to put this link in the description where you can check it. We've covered a video about it as well, so you can probably go ahead and check out the video. At the same time, there is a scope development update that is going on. So they're also looking at ways to revamp this entire thing owing to the fact that most of you guys would like to do your texture painting directly on your sculpt in the sculpting room and in most cases you might also want to take advantage of things like EV, of course and probably you would like to enhance your details and also work way faster so these are things that are currently under works and probably will be seeing these things in either blender 3.2 or maybe 3.3 but either ways these two are in active development so even and the viewport does have an update but it isn't an update you know so to speak so if you click on that it takes you over to the image editor which is basically what we've mentioned already and then if you go over to the vfx and video there's a couple of updates that's available right there for the video sequence editor and also the compositor and you can also find a couple more updates that deals with you know the sculpt paint and texture this isn't so much this is just things that deals with udims being active right now and of course if you're thinking about add-ons there is also a couple of add-on updates that's available at the same time i believe lots of you guys might also mention things that deals with animation that is something that didn't make it to 3.1 but that isn't the case there is actually some updates that's available for 3.1 that deals with animation and this is also pretty impressive so for those who like to check out these ones as well, all of these links is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. What is the most favorite thing about 3.1 that you're so excited about? I'd like to know what those things are in the comment section. And of course, if you're not subscribed, simply hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification. Tell me what you guys think about this one. And if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like. And don't forget to share with a friend. And I'd like to see you guys in the next one. Peace.